So I'm in the Department of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery at Washington University, where I serve as Division Chief for Otology and Neurotology. In layman's terms, that's diseases of the ear and the related structures. So people always ask you, what does that mean? So basically what I tell people in the simplest terms, if you draw a circle around here and go to the brainstem, that's what I do. And that includes diseases of the nerves that travel from the inner ear to the brain, diseases of the middle ear and inner ear, as well as um, growths and chronic ear infections. What drives me, what I like most about what I do, is the fact that I'm not doing the same thing I did 10 years ago. And I really enjoy the fact that our field is very dynamic, whether it be a tumor or a problem where the patient has severe hearing loss. Knowing that we can do something for them today that we couldn't do 10 or 15 years ago, and also the promise that we hold that in the next generation, the next 10 or 15 years, we'll be able to answer that even better for the patients. Best thing that would ever happen is we can figure out a way to treat somebody that has one of these tumors with a very simple uh, treatment paradigm, medication, or what have you, and then we're done, I'm out of business. And people who used to ask me, what's the best, what, what do you view your goal in dealing with hearing loss? I said, put me out of business. I don't have to do the surgeries for hearing loss. We figure out a cure for it. That would be the best outcome. Now, obviously that's not gonna happen tomorrow. So what we really wanna see is where we are going in the next five, 10 years and provide a much better outcome for our patients. More minimally invasive techniques, maybe uh, more uh, stage procedures, maybe more collaboration with the radiation oncology partners and perhaps even chemotherapy with our medical oncologists, depending on what we see. We're getting to know more about tumor growth rates. So that's some of the research that's being done and how much tumors grow, and which tumors grow, and which don't. If we had a better understanding of some of these benign growths that will never change, save the patient a lot. On the other hand, if we know that tumor is gonna do something, we wanna treat it as early as possible. And so these are the sort of things we're learning more about. I think we're gonna know more about that in the next 10 or 15 years. We're looking at, fortunately, for the most part, benign growths, but they're in very strategically complex areas. These uh, tumors are not simple warts on your skin, but rather they're growing in between nerves that, are create, uh, that supply vital functions uh, as they traverse between the brain and the ear and the brain and the fr uh, front part of your face. So that includes uh, nerves that supply sensation on the side of the face, facial movement, hearing and balance, as well as many others. And in working to get these very complex tumors out, it's much better dealt with when we work on a collaborative basis. So for example, this morning we worked on a patient who had a, who had a tumor arising from the hearing and balance nerve. And we did this in conjunction with the chairman of neurosurgery, Dr. Greg Ziffel. And we fortunately had a spectacular outcome getting the tumor out and preserved the nerve functions we wanted to do. If patients know they can come here and be treated well, treated with dignity, and know that they're gonna get the best outcome possible, they're gonna come. Now, how are we able to deliver that? That's because of the best people working around us. Whether it be our surgeons, our radiologists, our, our oncologists, our radiation therapists, or even the people doing the science and the basic science behind all of this, the patients know that when they come here, they're gonna get the best outcome that is possible, nationally and perhaps even globally. We wanna do the best for them. There's nothing better than when I see a patient one year, two years, three years out from their treatment and know they're doing great without ev any evidence for recurrent disease or if there is disease, it's not changing. That's the most rewarding thing, that we've done well for our patients, well by our patients. The second most rewarding thing is what we're doing to train the next generation of physicians and surgeons. I like to call them my progeny, but what we're really doing is we're trying to change the next generation to be able to do better than we do. And that's, that, that's a worthwhile goal every day when, we, when I come to work.